this. So we are working uh, and partnered with the various universities, RIT and U of R, from a research and development standpoint, as well as um, full partnership and support on what Rockspot's doing. And we're also partnered with MCC to help train the next generation. Um, my area of focus is outreach to help inform neighborhoods on what the Solarize project is and how everybody can actually get access to solar. Educate the public that solar does work in Rochester, even though we have snow and we have shade. Um, if you're not familiar, Bausch & Lomb has a rather large solar array at this point, and they reach their peak production between November and January of the past winter. So it's important to let people know that it does actually work here on trade work, but pe people might assume. Um, we also want people to know that it can be affordable. The technology has changed so much that you can actually afford it. And if you're an individual who is very low income, which I understand is a huge part of our city, we have quite the spectrum when it comes to income levels in the city of Rochester. Um, but it's very important and one of our, the tenets of our organization that we want every individual to have access to solar power to help alleviate the energy poverty that occurs. Um, I'm not sure if you know the statistics, but in Africa, it costs about 25% of someone's income to purchase kerosene to light their home. In the city of Rochester, New York, we're at the same energy poverty level. It takes people in the inner city 25% of their income to heat their home. And that's not really something to be proud of, and we want to make a difference there. So we are working not only with homeowners, but we realize there are also renters within the community, a large constituent. So we are working with um, Pathstone as one of the larger landowners and property owners within the city limits um, to help them implement solar too. And we really feel that this is gonna be a huge positive for the community in terms of helping people get access to clean energy. Obviously, saving our planet is a wonderful goal, but we need people to understand that they can financially do it. Um, so one of the things we want to do, and we'd like your permission for, is to have a solar assembly. We're currently working on a job at the St. Monica's Church, and we'd like to hold the solar assembly there and invite the community, um, let people know that solar is coming to Rochester, and we're there to introduce ourselves, what the Solarize campaign is, and to get um, questions from the community to find out what the objections are and where people think the roadblocks are to having access to solar energy. So I know that's a lot of information to just dump all at once. Um, does anyone have any questions that I might try to answer? Do you have a date for this uh, assembly? We'd like to schedule that with you, oh. so we don't have a date. So we're asking for that. And I, I'm very interested in the fact that I heard you say that you were thinking you were going to encourage people to heat their house with electricity. Yes, actually, um, when, when we do a solar assembly, we're not just going to talk about solar. That is a huge proponent, and the goal is to get people signed up to get solar for the homeowners in our area. Um, but we also want to let people know that they have access to energy audits for free. And by doing little things around their home, that'll reduce their energy consumption. And you might find that a home has a really old boiler or a really old heating system. And if that can be converted over to something more energy efficient that runs on electricity, then you could tie that in with the solar. So it's, it's kind of a compounding effect. Um, you know, saving the planet is not just about changing your light bulbs. Uh, there are a lot of things that we can do to help um, transform things. And if you're not familiar, the, the legal landscape is changing really, really rapidly. You've probably heard about Cuomo's uh, New York Prize. We are at the table for that grant to help bring that money to Rochester and help us build up the manufacturing lines that need to be in place to help support solar installations. Um, and Laws have changed to basically say that the solar cannot be owned by the utilities. Solar has to be owned by the people that are generating it. And the utilities are going to have to go back to a model where they're actually servicing the lines, which is what they were originally intended to do. So um, we are partnered with NYSERDA. The Solarize campaign is a NYSERDA campaign. Um, we're also, and that's the New York uh, State Energy Regulatory Agency, I believe. Um, and night by the New York Power Authority, and they have governance over our g &E. So one of the things that we'd like to let people know is that if you don't think that you can afford solar, that's okay, because the cost of the installation can be rolled into your bill with our g and &E, and you still pay the exact same amount you paid today, and as you pay off your system, your bill goes down to zero eventually. 
so that it doesn't cost any more out of pocket. And we feel that that's a really, really important model for a lot of individuals in our community who don't have the means and don't have the credit and they can't go get a home loan. And for neighbors that honestly are in no position, you can also work together to take some of these empty lots and abandoned houses and create empty lots and install a solar microgrid for all of the houses in that community to tie into so that everybody gets to own this together. And we're working with um, different financial institutions that are considered, I think you'd call them green banks. So they're there to find the financial gaps between people's income or lack thereof, the grants and other rebates and tax incentives that are in place, and also the um, any gaps there that might appear, because there are gonna be gaps. And they can help create financial products to help bridge those gaps for individuals and for collectives. So when the community owns the solar, and the community own, understands how to maintain their solar, um, it gives them ownership in their neighborhood and ownership in their community. Um, we're also partnered with the um, seed folk farmers, the urban farmers, and if we go with the microgrid model for a community in an empty lot, we also want to make sure that there is um, a greenhouse on site, that the community can get fresh fruits and vegetables, that they can grow themselves year round, and Seed Folk City Farm? Yes, Seed Folk City Farm, thank you. Um, so we really, we're really looking at the city from a holistic approach, and while we realize there's no silver bullet to end poverty, we do think that we can make a huge difference in bringing a lot of people back to work, educating those in our community as they grow up to get them to work in the, in the industry, and uh, making a positive impact on, on the neighborhoods to help people get out of energy poverty, put a little bit more money back in their pockets, and feel that sense of ownership in, in their neighborhood. Just out of curiosity, cost-wise, I know like years ago it was like a lot of money to right. put in solar panels. Right. So percentage-wise, what is it to me? On uh, average, uh, around $9,000, which a lot of people in our city can afford. You know, if you look at the East Avenue area, these are people that can afford to elevate that money themselves, and they often will. If you're going to redo your kitchen, why wouldn't you put solar on? You know, if you can afford that straight out. Um, but there are a lot of different ways to finance that, depending on your means and depending on your situation. Um, something I almost forgot to mention is we have actually we have a um, a group of installers that we have pre-vetted through an our request for proposal process. We have references on these individuals. They are very much planning to work together on the various installs because this campaign is huge. This is a campaign to get solar for every neighborhood or rooftop or just getting everybody access to solar. So they have all agreed to work with not only the richest neighborhoods getting those jobs, but also with the poorest neighborhoods where they don't see as much up front. Um, Rock Spot as an organization is uh, founded by Dr. Susan Spencer, who has her RIT, uh, her PhD from RIT. and. She's got a PhD in solar technology, microsystems engineering, I believe it is. Um, and she is very much involved in consulting and understanding what these guys do from a construction standpoint. And um, they understand the technology as well. So she has truly vetted these, these companies to make sure that these are groups that won't you know, do half a job or do a poor job or not get back to people, or not take the jobs from the people they're not gonna make the most, most money off of. Um, these are people who are also committed. Obviously, it's beneficial to their business. They're gonna make money. But we feel that that gives them an opportunity to hire more people, and train more people in our communities to install solar, and maybe that becomes a career path for people. And another means, hopefully, out of poverty. Is Rock Spot an acronym? Um, Rochester Solar Power Organization team. Thank you. What, what are you doing with um, poor homes? Uh, quite often the roof may not be in the best of shape and yet you need to have a good solid roof before you go to the True. trouble of putting this up. True, and um, part of what Rock, Rock Spot does in terms of helping the installers is we take a lot of their costs off to help them lower prices. So we do a site assessment we can take a look at the structural integrity of the roof, how old it is, what kind of work needs to be done to it. If the roof is not suitable, then there may be a carport that is suitable or a garage nearby. Um, 
as I mentioned earlier, there is the opportunity to, to take um, brown fields in the larger sense and also the um, empty lots and abandoned houses to create empty lots and set up a microgrid right there so that multiple homes would tie into that system. So it's almost like mini solar farms, if you will. These really aren't that heavy uh, a deal uh, in terms of the roofs. It's really quite interesting. We did approve um, a solar roof last month at the Preservation Board for a home on one of those places off of East Avenue. I don't remember which one it was. Not Vic Park, but one of them over there. And uh, it was a matter of moving the panels that are fairly flat. They're four inches off of the roof, actually, the ones mm -hmm. that they showed. And they're, you know, we got a chance to pick them up and everything, and they really weren't that heavy. However, uh, I know uh, at least my winter was sunny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thailand had every day had sun, but uh, 57 days of sun in uh, in uh, Rochester was something that I asked about. What they were estimating was is that they could they could they could take your electric bill that you have now, whatever you're doing with electric now, which most of us don't have electric furnaces because we, most of us have just diverted to gas from oil because that was going to be the way to go. But anyway, they, uh, that, they, they were able to, at the end of a year, uh, run their electric in the house off of the solar. And they were, this, there wasn't that many panels, but it isn't exactly, um, you know, it's a, it is a big cost. But anyway, it's just that I was surprised that with 57 days of um, sun, full sun, that you, you could do it. But it's a matter of light and so forth and so on. And which side of the house you have it on. What we did approve of this place was the back side of the house, uh, not visible to the street, so it it was a preservation area, very, you know, whatever. So anyway, that was my, that's my two cents. Now, overproduction during the day, you're selling that back to our G&E or what? Not necessarily. If we go with the cluster model, there's the ability to actually store the energy right there for that neighborhood. And how are you storing it? Um, in batteries. So that's, that's one method. Um, the really technical questions on solar, I'm going to have to get answers for you and get back to you because Dr. Susan Spencer clearly is more educated in that my, than myself. Um, my focus is the neighborhoods and the outreach. Um, but yeah, there, there is the opportunity to store that. Uh, there are also ways, and the legislation is still changing on this, um, but there are ways to make it so that whatever you've given back to the grid, you don't sell it, but then anything that you need in your downtime is available to you. It's a credit system. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know a whole lot about the ins and outs of it, um, but my understanding is that it's a much better way to go than selling it and buying it back all the time. Because again, if the utilities are focused on maintaining lines, their job is distribution for some of these grids that are going to connect together. Mm -hmm. We shall see. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's a lot of potential for our larger properties, or in like the purchase, but yeah. in these communities, what, what's the cost of that? Um, mm -hmm. So the investment today will pay right. off on um, the road. And, uh, you know, we see a lot of these must have properties around here that yeah, they're being rented, but maybe the property owner doesn't, you know, he's paying the heat bill, you know. Right. And, uh, well, I, I think it would be a good idea if you put some of these in the vacant lots because we have a, this little church over in our place that has those glass windows in them, and they're all blown out by people driving down the expressway and shooting them. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that we, you put them some in your neighborhood so that we can not have to replace these glass. Right. <laughs> That's great. And maybe a symposium at the, um, the farmer's market. You see that they're, you know, it's not like the old days when you put the big panels up and they yeah. were up on your roof and sideways. The yeah. place really, it was, it was about three and a half, four inches at the most, yeah. and it laid flat to the roof. And I, I should add that um, as far as financial incentives go, there's a huge campaign right now that ends, um, I believe, at the end of 2016, where you get the best deal now in terms of the best tax rebates, and those incentives decrease over time. So the longer you wait, the fewer your incentives you can get. 
And through the Solarize campaign, part of this coalition of installers, what that does is it allows us to give really huge discounts on solar during the campaign. And the more neighbors in a neighborhood that get solar, the better economies of scale these installers have so they can give even better pricing to everybody. So it's really beneficial to get your neighbors involved and tell your neighbors that they should think about getting solar too. So. So I have two questions. So if you're interested in this, what number do you call? <laughs> if you go to rockspot.org, you can go to our website. You can fill out a survey. Um, we're going to be putting out a survey soon, I believe next week, to start gathering some demographic information. So you'll see that probably on your door in the next few weeks. Um, but you can find out a lot right on the website. Okay. The other question is that if someone is in need of a roof now, is it better to go metal because of this? Because you don't want to have to put on a new roof after you do the... Um... Well, the solar panels are really sort of bolted on, so they can be taken off fairly okay. easily um, to put a new roof in. I'm not an expert on okay. roof types, um, but if, if you'd like, I can get back to you with that information. That's okay. I'll go to the website. Okay. Is yes. it ROC or ROCK? R-O-C-S-E-O-T dot okay. org. Do you, do you know much about solar power and water heaters? Um, my understanding is that they are ridiculously efficient. Um, I don't know a lot about them, but I have heard Susan talk about them, and she's very much behind them. They're very efficient. Yeah, mine's 15 years old, so I'm going to have to replace right. it. So that's part of what these audits can do is help you identify areas where you've got an aging appliance and by spending you know maybe a hundred dollars more than you would have already spent or maybe two hundred dollars more you can get something that will really be much better in the long run and if you can power it with electricity all the better because there's I, what did Susan say at the last board meeting um, the amount of electricity that the state of New York or no I'm sorry that every person in the entire world used in the year 2014 is sent down to our planet in 90 minutes from the sun. We're not capturing it. We're not doing enough to, to harness it and put it to our benefit. So the photons are there. They're being shot at us for free. Let's put this in the hands of the people to capture it and put it to use because we can't keep relying on fossil fuels and not just for the cost of it, but the cost to our planet and the cost to our own pocketbooks. I mean, I'm, I'm a city resident too, I'm a homeowner here too, and it's, it's something that I'm actually starting myself. Like, if I'm going to talk the talk, I need to walk the walk. So my husband and I are getting into, all right, Susan, when you have five minutes to breathe, um, <laughs> tell us which installers <laughs> we should use. Yes? Do you have an idea of, say, for example, the amount of people, say, is it 10 houses, maybe 20 neighbors, we would get that discount, give an idea of whatever you are? I don't know the numbers on that. Um, we, we need to get our installers at the Solar Assembly to give more specifics on that. I would figure assembly early in the season for the market, and then as people, and then you have time to reach out to people that have interest. Yeah. Even the breakdown of numbers, so if you say, mm -hmm. depending on your contractors, if you get five houses versus ten houses and you break that down, so we kind of have a goal to try to go after so many houses for that specific price. Right. Right. I'll give you my card so we can hook up. Great. Because I think that's a great idea. And I mean, we're, we have like 500 people every week, so nice. uh, it's a good place to start. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. How much of a um, vandalism problem have you had with these? I assume that if somebody pitches a rock at one of these, it's probably going to cause at least one panel to short out, what's the situation? Well, um, when you purchase solar, part of your purchase agreement is a maintenance agreement as well. So your installers will also be your main maintenance people. Um, I believe that it's a, an insurance situation. I don't know if it goes on homeowner's insurance or if it goes under warranty with the installers, um, but that's certainly information we can make sure that the <coughs> installers answer at the solar assembly. So the insurance companies are on board provide solar insurance? That's what I need to find out. Okay. That's what I need to find out. Well, 
I'm sure you got hired for your enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to admit something. I am actually a California native. I grew up in Southern California. I moved here in 99. I've been in paychecks for 18 years, and I work in their training department. Um, so I kind of have environmentalism in my blood, the crunchy granola, hippie types. Um, but I, I just, I really strongly believe that we have to do something about our planet, and that's why I'm so committed to this project. We were talking about that group in Buffalo earlier, and uh, I think they're using solar in that project. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the Queens neighborhood. Mm -hmm. yeah. they, they get the 58 days of sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> from Harry, <laughs> <Mary>, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. It's really Thank exciting. You. Thank you. We get some momentum going, and uh, I like the farming aspect to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, if, if we can talk offline about yeah. um, dates for the solar assembly and. Um, NeighborWorks is partnered on this grant as well as the City of Rochester, so NeighborWorks is going to be helpful in getting you know notification out to, to neighbors when there's a solar assembly coming. Did you sign in? We have your email. I did. I did. Okay. Okay. Good. So I'll email you and you tonight, and we'll. And then I can put you in touch with some of the other market managers as well. Too. Wonderful. And what was your your name again? I'm Jackie. Jackie Farrell. Farrell. F A R R E L. -O. I also work at um, the Office of Adult Career Education Services at 30 Park Street, and I think they'd be really interested in the manufacturing part. These are trying to get folks out of the services and jobs, so we yes. definitely need to talk with them. Absolutely. What's your name? Eleanor Coleman. Eleanor Coleman. E-L-E-A-N-O-R Coleman. It's Eleanor.Coleman at gmail. What was the name of the grant you, you said you got to work with? The Solarize grant, uh, Community Solar yeah. through NYSERDA. Okay. Um, and the website is solarizeflowercity.com. We're currently in the process of getting more information on there. The news release was just released on Tuesday of this week from NYSERDA. So we're getting our website up and running and getting ours out. Thank you so much. You said NYSERDA city grant, community grant? Uh, community Solar. SolarizeCity.com? Um, SolarizeFlowerCity.com. Solarize and flower. also, it's a smell of a flower, yes, yeah. the pretty flowers that pop up in the spring. Um, I do want to mention that um, there is a Solarize Rochester website that is not affiliated with this, and we're currently working with the, um, the organizers of that website just so that everybody's understanding there's no confusion in the community. So. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're going to start a round table on this side. Thank you. 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 Thank you